What's up, everybody? We're back, and it's the week one Schrager NFL cheat sheet. Number one, the Kansas City offense is not dead. Oh, I think the Chiefs offense is going to be humming, and I think it starts week one against the Arizona Cardinals. I know a lot was made of the Tyreek Hill trade, but what if I told you that not only Patrick Mahomes, but Andy Reid and GM Brett Veach and ownership we're all pretty much aware of that trade going down long before that trade actually happened. And there was agreement amongst everyone that they loved Tyreek Hill, but there was no way they were gonna be able to pay Tyreek what Tyreek deserved. So they trade away Tyreek Hill and they get some draft picks in return. And what do they do? They start building from the bottom up. I love all these new faces in this wide receivers room in Kansas City. I love Juju Smith-Schuster this season. I think his knee is just fine. I think he will play an immediate impact role for that team. I think that Marquez Valdez-Scantling will have more success in the Kansas City offense than he did with Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay. And the guy that I'm looking at, it's a player named Justin Watson, number 84 for the Kansas City Chiefs. You might not know that name. He went to the University of Pennsylvania, an Ivy League guy, and kind of toiled on the Buccaneers practice squad for many years. Well, the Chiefs picked him up and he was the standout of not only mini camp, but training camp. That's just three names. You've got Sky Moore, you still got Nicole Hardman, you've got Travis Kelsey and, and Jody Fortson at tight end, and all those running backs and maybe the best offensive line in football protecting the golden child, Patrick Mahomes. Oh yeah, and Andy Reid and Eric Bieniemy, they're still there. Don't do any funerals for the Chiefs offense. They're gonna be back this season and they might be better than ever. Number two, I've got concerns with the Packers offense but not at the wide receiver position. No, I, I don't think the wide receiver position is what worries me. I think Rodgers will figure it out. You've got some rookies, you got some veterans and like Lazard and Watkins and Randall Cobb, he'll figure that out. I'm concerned about the offensive line. And I know they had their injuries last year and they figured it out with scotch tape and those guys that did play, played well above what people expected. But I'm hearing that Bakhtiari and Jenkins are back, but yet, Week one is a couple hours away, and we don't have any clarity if either one of those guys is starting week one. You know, Nathaniel Hackett, the offensive coordinator from last year, he's no longer there. Uh, Luke Getze, the quarterback's coach uh, from last year, he's no longer there. And if Jenkins and Bakhtiari are not out there week one against Minnesota, I've got some serious concerns about how this offensive line is going to stand up, not only for week one, but over the course of 18 weeks and then a playoff push. I will feel really good and I'll feel really confident with the Packers if Bakhtiari and Jenkins are out there. I know that offensive line play isn't as sexy as complaining about wide receivers. You don't get offensive points in fantasy football for offensive line play, but I assure you internally there at Green Bay, the old line is what everyone's talking about. Not so much the wide receivers are. Number three, I think the San Francisco 49ers are a really good quarterback away from being Super Bowl champions this year. I'm just not sure Trey Lance is a really good quarterback yet. I can say that. I, I saw Trey Lance in college and he was awesome. It was at North Dakota State and it was several seasons ago now. Um, I saw him last year for the 49ers and he wasn't awesome. He had a lot of learning to do. And everything I hear out of 49ers camp is that this guy has, has grown and matured leaps and bounds over the past offseason. A, he was with these receivers in the offseason when Jimmy Garoppolo wasn't. B, he's got a year of Shanahan's coaching and the playbook under his belt now. And, and C, maybe most importantly, it's his team. There's no one else in front of him. There's no one else that has to really be given the, the rain. It's been his team. Um, but is he good? Is he good yet? Because this 49ers team is good. They're really good. In fact, they're excellent. They've got the best left tackle in football. I think they've got the toughest tight end in football. I think Freddie Warner might be one of the top three linebackers in football. And in Bosa and Armstead and hopefully Kinlaw, you've got one of the best defensive lines in football. You've got in Debo and a resurgent Brandon Ayuk in that running game behind them. Everything is good is the quarterback. And gosh, if, if they start off slow, if they lose to the Bears in week one, or if they lose to the Seahawks, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. This could get ugly early, and this could be a lot of fans asking for Jimmy G, but also some veterans in the room saying, hey, are we doing this to win a Super Bowl, or are we doing this to protect your draft pick, coach? Really fascinating player, Trey Lance. I'm not sure he's great. I know that this team is. We'll see soon enough. Number four, prediction time. 
Put your money where your mouth is, Peter. Here we go. Here's who I think is going to win an award and some dark horse contenders for each award. Uh, this is fun. All right, MVP. Who I think is going to an MVP? I've got Russ. I think Russell Wilson's the MVP this year. Denver needs a, a, a revitalization, and they got it in Wilson. Have been to the playoffs since Peyton Manning was the quarterback in 2016. I think Russell takes him there, and I think he puts up huge numbers in that Nathaniel Hackett offense. I love Russell Wilson and the Broncos this year. How much do I love them? We'll see when my Super Bowl pick comes out later this week. Um, but I will say this, Russell Wilson's going to be a stud. A dark horse winner. How about Jameis Winston? If the Saints are slightly better than they were last year, and we're talking about MVP talk out of that quarterback, and they were really good last year. Great defense, good skill position players, but it was a rotating door at quarterback between Jameis and Taysom Hill, and then of course, Ian Book for that forgettable Monday night game. I think Jameis, if he puts up big numbers and the Saints beat the Bucks and the NFC South is gonna get some MVP chatter. All right, how about Offensive Rookie of the Year? Offensive Rookie of the Year, I like Brees Hall, the Jets running back. I'm getting comparisons to Matt Forte. And if you follow my stuff and you read my column and you know my relationship with those Jets staffers, uh, this guy's the real deal. The question is, can the Jets stay in enough games where the running game is established? And if he gets enough carries with Michael Carter, I do think he's gonna put up huge numbers. And I think the Jets offense is gonna be much improved. I'm going Brees Hall as my Offensive Rookie of the Year pick. A dark horse pick for that position? How about Kenneth Walker? For the Seahawks. We don't talk about the Seahawks much. It's like, ah, Drew Locke, Geno Smith, like they're not gonna be you think Pete Carroll and John Schneider are gonna throw out a terrible team onto the field? And do you think Kenneth Walker was drafted where he was without getting a lot of carries? I think Kenneth Walker will eventually be the healthy number one guy. And I think Kenneth Walker is a nice dark horse pick for offensive rookie of the year. How about defensive rookie of the year? My guy, who I think is gonna win it, number 56 for those Kansas City Chiefs, George Carl Laftis. I think Carl Laftis is a beast. They took him at the end of the first round and he's been outstanding all summer long. I think he puts up double digit sacks. He is your defensive rookie of the year. A dark horse, though, is another New York Jet. I'm going with Michael Clemens, defensive lineman for the Jets. Texas A&M, not a day one or day two pick, but a stud, and has played the part for the Jets this summer. They have so many good rookies on that New York roster. I think Michael Clemens is going to be a breakout star. How about defensive player of the year? Defensive player of the year is boring for me. I think Aaron Donald for the Rams is your defensive player of the year. Uh, I see him shirtless there at the, at the parade, and I'm like, okay, no, that guy should win it every year. And we know what he does on the field. I think he's going to motivate and influence this team to stay on point and to make up for the loss of Von Miller, which I think is very big. And of course, they also lost a guy named Sebastian Joseph Day, who's very good at defensive tackle. I think Aaron Donald makes up for it. I think he's your defensive player of the year. A dark horse though, one of my favorite players in the league who is now playing for his fourth NFL team, Yannick Ngakwe. Yannick Ngakwe, still a young player in this league, and I think he's going to put up a boatload of sacks in that Indianapolis Colts defense. He's lining up there with, obviously, DeForest Buckner, but also Shaq Leonard behind him in an awesome defensive backfield in Indianapolis. I think that Yannick Ngakwe could put up huge sack numbers. Quickly, some other ones. Coach of the year, I'm, I'm still in this Broncos thing. I think Nathaniel Hackett's your coach of the year and your dark horse coach of the year. What if the Falcons are good? I think Arthur Smith's a smart coach. I think we can get it out of them. And then comeback player of the year, Christian McCaffrey is your comeback player of the year. I expect big numbers, fantasy football and otherwise, out of Christian McCaffrey. He will stay healthy. He will be solid this year. And your dark horse, how about our guy Julio? Hall of Fame wide receiver Julio Jones goes to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I think he's going to play a role in a big one. That's a dark horse comeback player of the year after a forgettable season in Tennessee. There you go. They're the picks. I think they're going to be right. All right, guys, enjoy week one. We're finally here. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please read the column I do every week called The Cheat Sheet. It's over there on foxsports.com. And keep on clicking and enjoying these videos. And give us feedback on Twitter, wherever. Uh, you can do that all on Fox Sports Digital. All right, I'm getting out of here. Let's go. Football's on.